तदभक्ताय नमो नम ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंद गोपकुमराय गोविंदाय नमो नमः नमो महावदनाय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाय से कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नामने गौरात्रि से नमः रिकॉर्डिंग इन प्रोग्रेस जय श्री कृष्ण श्री चैतन्य मनोभिष्टम स्थपिताम येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मयं ददाति स्वपदांतिकम जय श्री चैतन्य मनोभिष्टम स्थपिताम येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मयं ददाति स्वपदांतिकम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवासौर भक्त बंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे यू आर ऑल वेलकम फॉर कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ अवर भक्ति शास्त्र नेक्टर ऑफ डिवोशन स्टडीज अंडर बी आई एच ही येस्टरडे वी स्टार्टेड द चैप्टर वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट वेव the samanya bhakti uttam bhakti and the characteristic of the pure devotional service so characteristic of pure devotional service to describe the characteristic of pure devotional service shila rupa shila rupa goswami quoted uh, from shrimad bhagavatam third canto the characteristic of a pure devotee the one who is only interested in a loving devotional service to the supreme lord and, he, and and for him all the five type of liberations are insignificant he is not interested in them so this is one of the uh, characteristic of pure devotional service and then shri rupa goswami uh give the six uh, characteristic of devotional service so there are the five type of liberation which you have to memorize uh, the sanskrit word and their english equivalent salokya living on the same planet sarishti enjoying same opulences samipya lives as companion sarupya have same feature and sayujya become one with the lord and then we discussed yesterday the six characteristic of devotional service the first two which appear during the sadhan bhakti they are klesha gne relief from material distress and shubhada are all auspicious so these two will stay and the two more will appear when when uh, when uh, some uh, devotee fortunately awaken his bhav bhakti so bhav bhakti has prominently moksha lagu takarta which means minimize the value of liberation and suddur labha which means very rare so these all four will manifest in the person who has developed bhav bhakti and the last two chandra anand vishesh atma means condensed bliss and shri krishna akrishni that means attract krishna these are the two which are specific for prema bhakti the other four are already there So this is what yesterday we discussed. Any? Uh, who is there? This microphone is uh, on and he's chanting. Chanting is very good, but during class, uh, microphone Hari Bol. Yeah, now it is off, Prabhu. Okay. Then suffering or klesha. what is the root cause of the suffering ignorance or avidya which leads to seed of sinful material desires called bijam which give rise to sinful activity called papam and the result is sinful reaction called suffering or klesh so this is the dynamic of klesh and then we started discussing the two type of sinful reaction 
the sinful reaction which is prarabdha means manifest or mature and aprarabdha means unmanifest or immature and in this Srila Prabhupada's analogy we have discussed about a criminal not yet caught is aprarabdha or unmanifest he is awaiting arrest there is when he is caught it is called prarabdha and that manifest and then he suffer Hare Krishna Prabhu can yes. you show me the first slide again the previous slide please once uh, yeah thank you just a moment thank you Prabhu you don't have these slides Yes, we have. No. Yes, we do, Prabhu. I just, I just joined in late, so I thought I missed out. So now, what we are, what yesterday we discuss is and now all these four stages, how they all are nullified, all reaction to sinful activities, which is called suffering or klesh, are nullified, are destroyed by pure devotional service. So yesterday we discussed the. Number one, bhakti destroy of the karma, which means unmanifest. And the evidence is from 11, 14, 19 of Srimad Bhagavatam, which means like the fire burn all the fuel. Similarly, bhakti to Supreme Lord burns all the sinful reaction from the past, uh, the, uh, the apra unmanifest and kut both which are going to manifest in future lives. So this is the quotation which we have yesterday read. And then we read the Bhakti also destroy prarabdha karma means manifest or mature. It means we have taken some birth, some family and then uh, we are enjoying our suffering. Since enjoying is not a subject matter of this, uh, uh, this section, so it is all about suffering. So prarabdha means mature manifest, it means bhakti destroy the karma bij. It means the reaction which are in the form of seed and in this life we will experience which are not yet manifest because we have some life left to live. So these two the karma bija, which means the reaction to sinful, seed of the reaction for sinful activity, which is about to fructify within this life, and already what uh, education or parent or uh, uh, some facilities that some we got or suffering we got, that is called prarabdha. And this uh, verse is quoted from 333.6 3 Srimad Bhagavatam, which uh, says one who chants the holy name even if he is a dog eater he is qualified to perform sacrifice which means his all sinful reactions are completely finished but his body will remain as say, such but his sinful reaction are removed and he is eligible to perform the activities which a brahman can perform it means he is purified from his sinful birth, birth due to sinful activities. This is what we discussed yesterday. Then we again, again some microphone. Then we reach to the paragraph on page number six, a verse from Padma Puran, in which the four stages of sinful reaction it means these are the stages of uh, clash. The last in the first slide, ignorance, seed of material desire, sinful action and sinful reaction. So sinful reaction actually has four stages. These are the four stages of sinful reaction, not clash. The, not the cause of clash, but the clash itself. They are prarabdha means unmanifest reactions 
एंड कूटम मीन्स अबाउट टू बिकम बीजम विच मीन्स फ्रक्टिफाई बट दे आर नॉट मैनिफेस्टेड इन दिस लाइफ दे विल मैनिफेस्ट इन सम फ्यूचर लाइफ then this bijam is a karma bij or a seed of sinful reactions about to become prar of the means about to mature within this life and prar of the means manifest reaction means birth in special particular family some education some relations some business whatever is prarabdh so these two the last two appear in this life and the aprarabdh and kuta appear in a future life and we have discussed this much yesterday now we have to continue further but here yesterday as uh, we were discussing something so after this section because this section has a word bij and we have the word bij also in the first slide the cause of suffering so now we are in confusion and it is a serious confusion what is that we can get into serious philosophical trouble if we consider the pap bijam pap bijam means seed of sinful desire material desires and karma bijan reaction nearing fructification which means within prarabdh in this life to be same so we should definitely differentiate the two now this is the cycle on the left side of the screen you see avidya or ignorance that give rise to the bijam which means sinful desire that leads to papam means sinful act that leads to aprarabdha which means unmanifested sinful reactions now from aprarabdha some will become prar of the manifest in this life and somebody will suffer but some aprarabd will continue as kut as kut means about to fructify but in the next life and it has sin sinful proclivity Uh, and this leads to again a sinful desire and again 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 it continue into sinful act action sinful then aprarab the this this cycle will continue like this now same on the right side without uh, ignorance it is shown that papam which means sinful reaction leads uh, leads to aprarab the which means unmanifest reaction now this unmanifest reaction has two ways one is a prarabdha which means manifest and other will go to the kuta sinful inclination and that will lead to bijam which means sinful desire and then will continue as a sinful action so next uh, slide has the same thing in a more almost same thing the same thing now after seeing this you see would you like to get into this vicious cycle what happened to your free will one wrong action and we are trapped for eternity isn't it so what is the correct understanding this is the correct understanding please consider this option avidya is there ignorance 
पाप बीजम और मटेरियल डिजायर्स आर देयर एंड पापम आर सिंफुल एक्ट इट इज देयर जीव हैज कंट्रोल ओवर दीज थिंग्स दे आर नॉट इनएविटेबल वी कैन यूज आवर फ्री विल एंड स्टॉप सिंफुल डिजायर बट वंस we act sinfully then there is a prarabdh and manifest reaction which leads to kutum reaction about to become pap bijam and then the karma bijam are so this kutum become pap bijam but it will continue the cycle the karma bijam reaction nearing fructification and prarabdh inevitable reaction this we cannot change this will manifest without any uh hindrance because there is no nothing to check this once the process is start it will continue so cycle to be broken only by the free will stopping the sinful desire are getting free from the ignorance by real knowledge now this is what we yesterday discuss अपरारब्ध एंड कूटम आर जनरली क्लब टूगेदर बिकॉज दे आर नॉट एक्सपीरियंस ड्यूरिंग दिस लाइफ टाइम एंड दिस वर्स विच वी हैव कोटेड फ्रॉम द इलेवेंथ कैंटो यथा अग्नि समद्ध अरचित असमद्ध अरचि वर्ष कवर्स अपरारद एंड कूटम देन प्रारब्ध एंड कर्म बीजम आर जनरली क्लब टूगेदर बिकॉज दे हैव एक्सपीरियंस इन दिस लाइफ यम नाम धेय है दिस इज द नेक्स्ट वर्स विच डिस्ट्रॉय दी प्रारब्ध वी हैव डिस्कस्ड सिंस जीव आर अनादि अपरारब्ध कर्म इज ऑल्सो अनादि एंड इन्फिनिट प्रारब्ध कर्म इज ओनली अ हैंडफुल ऑफ द कर्म वी एक्सपीरियंस इन दिस लाइफ बट अपरारब्ध आर अनलिमिटेड कूटम इज लाइक प्री मोनिटेशन ऑफ द सफरिंग दैट वी विल अंडर गो इन द नेक्स्ट लाइफ टाइम इफ द सेम काइंड ऑफ प्री pre monetization occur in this life it is the karma bija it means in this life same thing then is a karma bija it goes to the next life then it's called the uh, proclivity for sinful desire this verse says that destruction of reaction is kramena this is what we discussed yesterday but is prarabdh the first and aprarabdh the last so destruction is from prarabdh to aprarabdh but verse 21 uses 21 is in the next uh, in uh, bhakti samit sindhu uses the word sadya immediately to indicate prarabdh hartamam sadyo api sadya swanu kalpe this is the verse number uh, 12 uh, 11 chapter for in uh, uh, say 11th canto <coughs> this is explained by analogy that's yesterday we discussed just like when pile of uh, lotus petal is pierced by a needle it looks like it is an instantaneous act though petals are pierced one by one similar the scale of time in a in a scale of time the destruction of supreme due to bhakti seems instantaneous This is what Shri Prabhupada's purport in this uh, paragraph we have yesterday discussed. It is stated in the Padma Purana that there are four kinds of effects due to sinful activities, which are listed as effect which are not yet fructified means aprarab. In our book number two, effect which is lying as a seed is kuta. The effect which is already mature is prarab, and the effect which is almost mature is karma beej now it is also stated that all these four effect become immediately vanquished for those who surrender unto supreme personal god and vishnu and become engaged in his devotional service and full krishna consciousness from this statement padma point is understood that the material contamination is very subtle its beginning its fun, uh, its a uh, fruitation and results and how one suffered such result in the form of distress are part of a great chain a prarabdh kutum bijam prarabdh this is a chain
when one catches one so now Prabhupada gives the example or analogy when one catches some disease it is often very difficult to ascertain the cause of the disease where it originated and how it is maturing a prarab the kutam bijam prarab the suffering of the disease however does not appear all of a sudden it actually takes time kramena eva pralyati and in the med and in the medical field for a precaution sake the doctor inject a vaccine to prevent the growing of the contamination the practical injection to stop all fructification of seed of our sinful activity simply engagement in krishna consciousness aprarabdha haratvam Prabhupada is not defining kutum and bijam as sinful proclivity or disposition anywhere in his explanation. So this is something now that's Prabhupada's lecture we have discussed yesterday. Now we are going to the today's discussion. Is the it is that all yesterday what we discussed we have recapitulated. Anybody has any question or or comment till now? So we are going to start today. Bhakti destroys sinful desire, which means paap bijam. This paap bijam is first slide under ignorance. So now from below, we have we have learned how bhakti destroy a prarabd and prarabd. Now we are going, which means what we have discussed till now. is the reaction to the sinful activities which are manifest and unmanifest that are finished now the reactions are due to sinful desires so sinful desires how they are destroyed by pure bhakti that is a next paragraph In this connection, Subdev Goswami speak in sixth canto. So, for, at this paragraph, you write in your book, "Bhakti destroy sinful desires." And when you are writing this, you must remember the first slide: ignorance, seed of sinful desire, sinful action, and then sinful reaction. so we are now at the second level from above sinful desire that is called paap bijam and the verse is this quoted tai stani aghani poyante tapo dana vrta dibhi na dharma jam tad hrdayam yada अपिसा अंग्रेही सेवया अल्दो वन मे न्यूट्रलाइज द रिएक्शन ऑफ सिंफुल लाइफ सिंफुल लाइफ मीन्स प्रारब्ध आर सिंफुल एक्टिविटीज नाउ वी आर परफॉर्मिंग तानी अघानी अघानी मीन्स सिंफुल एक्टिविटीज थ्रू आस्ट्रोडी चैरिटी वो एंड अदर सच मैथड्स तपो दान व्रत आदि भी दीज पाइस एक्टिविटीज कैन नॉट अप्रूव द मटेरियल डिजायर्स न अधारम जम in one's heart tad hrdyam however if one serve the lotus feet of personality of godhead he is immediately free from all contamination tad api ish angri sevaya so this is the verse in our book now exactly in our uh, book you read the purport you will get this word sinful desire seed you Uh, mark this one line in our book in this connection sukhdev goswami is speak in sixth canto of shrimad bhagavatam second chapter verse number 70 about the story of the ajamil who began life as a fine dutiful brahman but in his young age young man who he become wholly corrupted by a prostitute at the end of his life 
he become uh, at the end of his wicked life just by calling name narayan he was saved despite of so much sin sukhdev points out that austerity charity and performance ritualistic ceremonies for counteracting sinful activities are recommended process but that by performing them one cannot remove the sinful desire seed so mark this one line what we are discussing is how the sinful desire seed is destroyed so this sinful desire seed can be removed only by achieving krishna consciousness and this can be accomplished very easily by chanting hari krishna maha mantra or hari krishna maha mantra as recommended by sri chaitanya mahaprabhu in other words unless one adopt the path of devotional service he cannot be 100% clean from all reaction of selfful activities what is last anybody can explain what is the meaning of last life or last line all reaction from sinful activities it means something is uh, still is a uh, root cause of sinful activity is a sinful desire that is still in the heart so it can at any time again manifest sometimes the example is given you know the bamboo the bamboo forest if it uh, if there is a fire in a bamboo forest all the bamboos are burnt but the root remains and by the next rain rainy season the roots again give rise to the very thick bamboos so people then sometime burn the thin bamboos and know that the root will remain and next time by the rainy season they will come very thick and more uh, a uh, useful bamboos so all these actions of uh, austerity charity and other can destroy the sinful reaction which are in this life but the seed is still there whenever there is a chance the seed will again fructify like ajamel he was doing all the brahmanical rituals every day and he was a very pious brahman but as soon as he saw that prostitute the sinful desire which was in the heart that desire manifested so desires are not destroyed usually by vedic rituals or charity and other things now this is what shila prabhupada just saw what we read by performing vedic rituals activities by giving money in charity this is the next paragraph and by undergoing austerity one can temporarily become free from reaction of sinful activities but at the next moment he must again become engaged in sinful activities because the seed is there for example nashila prabhupad gives two analogy analogies in this our uh, paragraph for example a person suffering from the venereal disease on account of excessive indulgence in sex life has to undergo some severe pain and medical treatment and he is then cured for time being but because he has not been able to remove the sex desire from his heart he must again indulge in the same thing and become a victim of the same disease this is one example the other example is the next paragraph so medical treatment may give temporary relief from the distress of these venereal such venereal disease but unless one is trained to understand the sex life is abominable it is impossible to be saved from such repeated distress similarly ritualistic performance is charity austerity which are recommended in vedas may temporarily stop one from acting in sinful way but as long as the heart is not clear 
one will have to repeat sinful activities again and again. And this is the second quotation. Another example given in Srimad Bhagavatam. Concerning the elephant who enter into the lake and take bath by se very seriously, cleaning his body thoroughly. Then as soon as he come on to soar, he again takes some dust from the earth and throw it over his body. Similarly, a person who is not trained in Krishna consciousness cannot become completely free from desire for sinful activities. Neither the yoga process, nor philosophical speculation, nor fruitive activities can save one from seeds of sinful reaction, desire. Seed of sinful desire. Only by being engaged in devotional service can this be done. So this is our two paragraph about this subject matter. Now we are going to the next and the last and the seed of sinful, a uh, seed of clash. That is avidya. Bhakti destroy avidya. So two analogies we have in this section where bhakti destroy seed of sinful desire. The venereal disease and elephant bath. Now we are going to the last section of the klesha gni. And this is bhakti destroy ignorance avidya and another word for ignorance is false ego. So the first verse which is quoted from 4th canto 22nd chapter 39 number verse Yada pada pankaja plasa vilasa bhaktya karamasham girtitam udagratyanti santa tadvan anrikta matyo yatayo piruddha shroto ganastam aranam bhajavasu devam karamasyam granthim grathim this is the word actually which is our subject matter karamasyam grathitam the devotee santaha by action of service vilas bhaktya to the toes of the lotus feet of Lord, Yadapada Pankaja Plas, can very easily overcome Udgarantyanti, the knot of ignorance carrying unlimited impression of karma, tied tightly by action, karma asyam grthitam. That is the word actually here important. Because this is very difficult, Tadvat. The empty-minded non-devotees, jnanin and yogis, riktamatya, although trying to stop the flow of the sense activities, shroto ganaha yatayaha api, cannot do that, naruddha. Therefore, you are advised to engage in devotion service to Krishna, the son of Vasudev. So, bhakti destroy avidya. Bhakti destroy avidya. This destruction happens only by the stage, at the stage of bhav. Uh, this is the uh, purport by Jiva Goswami. So this stage is not in a sadhana bhakti actually. Uh, generally, the Klesha Ghani stage is achieved by a Nista. You know this Nista, stage of Nista, Adav Sharda, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajan Kriya, Anarth Nivarti, Nista. By the time one reaches to the stage of Nista, the Klesha Ghani is almost complete. Uh, this is illustrated in the series of verses starting from Sharvad, Sukatha, Krishna. Now what actually, anyway, before going this uh, into detail of this, let us read what Srila Prabhupada has written. There is another evidence in the fourth canto of Bhagavatam. This is about how Bhakti destroy Avidya. What Sant Kumar says, My dear King, the false ego of human being, false ego is a equivalent to ignorance or avidya is being so strong that it keeps him in material existence and if as if tied by the strong ropes only by the devotee can cut that off knot easily 
by engaging in Krishna consciousness. Others are not in Krishna consciousness but are trying to become great mystic, ritualistic performers, cannot advance like devotees. Therefore, the duty of evidence to engage in the service of Krishna. Now the next paragraph clarifies the meaning. The tight knot of the false ego is due to ignorance, which means avidya. As long as ignorant about his identity, means that I am soul, I am not this body, he is sure to act wrongly and thereby become entangled in material, material contamination. This ignorance is factual knowledge. Uh, of factual knowledge can also be dissipated by Krishna consciousness as is confirmed in Padma Purana. This is the another quotation for how bhakti destroy avidya. This is the next quotation which we will come soon. Now this is the commentary by uh, our acharyas that the bhakti destroy avidya. This destruction happens only at this stage of bhav. This uh, is illustrated in a series of verses starting from Sharvanam Swakatha Krishna. Uh, this what is written here you know in the 7th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, first verse you have done by now. In Maya Sakt Mana Parth Yogam Yunyam Madhasriya Asankhyan Samagram Maam Yatha Gyasi Tachano. And in this uh, purport of this verse Srila Prabhupada has uh, given the dynamics of hearing. And then he quoted all these verses. So, uh, from verse number 17 to 21. He quoted all these verses and these are the verses Srila Prabhupada quoted when he landed in America in his uh, uh, bhajan or a poetry ka, poem called Bhagavad Dharma in America. He quoted these same verses exactly. So these are the verses Bhakti destroy Avidya but only at the stage of Bhav. Now how, how this goes? Lord in the heart destroy the desire for sense gratification from the heart of a devotee who has developed taste for hearing Krishna Katha. Sharvatam Swakatha Krishna Punyam Saramankirtana Irdhyanta Istaniya Bhadrani Dunoti Sahardam Satam. This is the verse. Indicate the stage of Sharda to unearth Nivarti. So this verse, Sharvatam Swakatha Krishna, is a working from the stage of Sharda to unearth Nivarti. With continuous hearing of Krishna Katha, one then reaches the stage of steady practice of devotional service, Nasht Prayeshu Abhadreshu. So he again indicates the stage of Nishta. Then the mode of patient ignorance disappears and pure goodness is established in the heart and he becomes completely happy. Tada Rajo Tamo Bhavaha indicates the state of Ruchi and Asakti. Then comes, uh, then such a person gain positive scientific knowledge of personality of God at Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam Evam Prasan Manaso indicate this stage of Bhav. Then at this stage knot of ignorance within the heart is cut and one sees the Supreme Lord. Vidyate Hridaya Granthi destruction of Avidya happens at this stage. So this is just a more uh, detailed study. You should not get confused with this. This is for you are uh, understanding that stage of uh, destruction of avidya or ignorance is at a higher stage of sadhana bhakti when it awakens bhav bhakti. And the evidence is given by Srila Jiva Goswami from Srimad Bhagavatam. Now this is the verse of Padma Puran which uh, is a second evidence that bhakti destroy avidya or ignorance. Kirtanu yatra vidya abhi hari bhakti anuttamma avidyam nirdayati asho dava jwaleva pangim panangim 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 means uh, serpents. As the forest fire burns of female snake demons Dava Jwala Dava Agni. Jwala means Agni and Dava means 
फॉरेस्ट पंग पनंगिम एवा व्हिच मींस फीमेल स्नेक डीमन सुप्रीम डिवोशन टू द लॉर्ड हरि भक्ति अनुत्तम क्विकली बर्न्स अप अविद्या कंप्लीटली अशौ अविद्याम निर्दयति बाय द नॉलेज विद्या व्हिच अकंपनीज भक्ति कृत अनु यात्रा विद्या भी सो दिस इज द वर्स व्हिच इज कोटेड इन आवर बुक आ Shri Prabhupada gave the translation of this book. Oh, this verse. Shri Prabhupada on this verse. This is what is in our book. The example is being given in this connection that when there is a forest fire, the extensive blazing at uh, the fire bla. Uh, when there is a forest fire, the extensive blazing automatically kills all the snakes in the forest. There are many many snakes on the ground of the forest and when a fire takes place it burns and the dry foliage and the snakes are immediately attacked a process of burning the animals who have four legs can flee from the fire or can at least try to flee but the snakes are immediately killed similarly blazing fire of krishna consciousness is so strong that the snakes of ignorance are immediately killed here ends our uh, klesha gani section of uh, characteristic of pure devotional service is it okay any question okay question or comment Yeah, Hari Krishna Prabhu. Yes. I had a question. <clears throat> uh, like, my question is like, uh, as any devotee, like you know, starts taking up Krishna consciousness process, like from from practical experience, we see that people start having like you know, like lesser miseries, like flesh thani. So my question is that. Is does that happen only at the end, but but which is how uh, you know how a level or at every step? Let's you know as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, what? "Prati Pada Purna Amrita Swadhanam." So, is it a continuous process? Is it suddenly happens? No, it not suddenly happens. It is a continuous process. It uh, <coughs> start from Sharda. It is start from Sharda, and gradually things will manifest. By the time one reaches to the Nista, almost uh, almost clash are finished. Only certain things le- can continue longer on till bhav bhakti, but almost 99 percent, 95 percent clash are finished by this stage of nishta. Uh, thank you, Prabhuji. Uh, one last like uh, follow-up question, which I've always had about and which has always confused me about nectar of devotion, is how does one diagnose as at what level? Mm-hmm. A devotee is that. Well, well that is, that, levels, is, but, that but is. Practically speaking, how can one know at what level a devotee is? Generally speaking, we know only Adho Sharda because we came in contact with devotees. Then we take initiation. That is Bhajan Kriya. Then we uh, 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 then we start uh, chanting, and then we are in the process of Anarth Nivarti. This much is common for anybody who has taken initiation, but the one who reaches to the nista, there are characteristics. So this is actually a separate uh, uh, seminar on Madhurya Kadambini by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, which describe all these stages from Adav Sharda till Prema, and what are the different uh, symptoms by which one can recognize at which stage somebody is. So he has given the full description of oh, what is anarth nevarti, what are the different anartha, and how, when somebody is at what level he is. So that is actually a separate uh, full seminar mm-hmm. on these stages from Adho Sharda till Prem. Uh, in a book called Madhurya Kadamini by Vishnuat Chakravarti Thakur. And also Bhakti Vinod Thakur has discussed all these in a. Uh, His uh, 
Nam Chintamani and other books. So there is a lot more uh, that we have to discuss actually. Uh, this is I think uh, 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 VIH is thinking between Bhakti Shastri and Bhakti Vaibhav there should be a, some course particularly about Madhuri Kadamani or some, uh, say Nam Chintamani or Bhakti Vinod Thakur that when we enter in ba uh, Bhagavatam we should have a little more uh, consciousness about our own devotional practices. Hare Krishna. Thanks, Ravish. Okay, this is what uh, is in slides which are given to you. Bhakti destroy bijam, material desires, and this is the verse Tani Tani Agani Puyanti. And then, then we have two analogies given in this. They are given here. Person suffering from venal disease and bathing of the elephant. And then we have another uh, Bhakti destroy the cause of suffering avidya. This verse from Bhagavatam 4.22, example of forest, forest fire and snakes. These are the two verses in the uh, proof that bhakti destroy avidya. That what we have done. Now we are going to the second characteristic of a pure devotional service. Bhakti bestow all auspiciousness. Subhadatvam. Uh, Subhadatvam. Dattva means give and Shubha means auspiciousness. Subha Dattva. Actually they are connected. If the suffering are described then automatically we will have uh, auspiciousness. Sufferings are gone, auspiciousness manifest. So they are interconnected and they are also continuous and simultaneous. So now what is auspiciousness? Anything is only called auspicious when it has four characteristics. Welfare for all, affection for all. This is called in Sanskrit which you are not, not required to remember. Prinanam. Prinanam. Prinanam means to become dear. Number two, attract all, which means anurakta, anuraktata, anuraktata, which means all, attracts everybody. Number three, produce good qualities, sadguna. And the fourth is bestow all superior happiness, sukha. Now, in our book, uh, quotes from Padma Pran and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Jharkhand is for the first two. That is in first paragraph. So we will read this uh, paragraph. So quality number two, quality of the pure devotion, Shobhada, best for all, all auspiciousness. Uh, this is the original verse in Bhakti Rasamit Sindhu. This you are not needed to memorize, but this is just for relishment. Shubhani, these are the name in Sanskrit which, you, uh, we are, which are given at the bottom of each. Shubhani Praninam Sarvaha Jagatam Anuraktata. Sadgunaha Sukhamiti Adini Akhyatani Manishibhi The wise Manishibhi The wise explained that there are four types of auspiciousness Shubha Shubhani Akhyatani Manishibhi Affection for all living entities Parina Parina Nam Prina Nam being attractive to all living bang, uh, entities, sarva jagatam anuraktata. Possession of all good qualities, sadgunaha. And happiness, sukham, as well as other items, itte adini, and some others. 
वाय जगत प्रिणिनम एंड सर्व जगतम अनुरक्तम आर मेंशन सेपरेटली द मेंशन ऑफ अदर आइटम्स आदि ने इंडिकेट सच थिंग्स एज कंट्रोलिंग ऑल अदर्स एंड प्रोड्यूसिंग ऑस्पिशियसनेस इन ऑल अदर्स शुभ और ऑस्पिशियसिस इज फोर ऑफ फोर टाइप्स जगत द प्रणीनम अफेक्शन फॉर ऑल जीवस सर्व जगतम अनुरक्तता बीइंग अट्रैक्टिव सदगुण प्रदत्व बेस्ट ऑफ ऑल गुड क्वालिटी सुख प्रदत्व बेस्ट ऑफ हैप्पीनेस सेम थिंग Okay, this is section we will see now. Shri Prabhupada on this verse. So, what is in our book? Shri Rupa Goswami has given a definition of auspiciousness. He says that actual auspiciousness means welfare activities for all people of the world. The Krishna Consciousness Movement is so nice that it can render highest benefit to all, to entire human race. everyone can be attracted by this movement everyone can feel the result therefore shri rupa goswami and other learned scholar agree that a broad propaganda program for the krishna conscious movement of devotional service all over the world is the highest humanitarian welfare activity sarva jagatam anuraktata for this to be attractive there is a quotation from the fourth canto ninth chapter verse number 47 yasya prasanno bhagavan gunai maitri adi bhi hari tasmai namanti bhutani nimanam aap eva swayam just as <coughs> water flow naturally to the lower level all the living beings naturally offer respect to a person with whom the lord is pleased because of his qualities and friendliness the another verse is from padma purana yena rjito hari te na tripata tripa trapitani jagata jagante api रज्यंति जंतवस्तत्र जगन्नाथ स्थावर पी जंगमा स्थावर पी ही हु वर्शिप द लॉर्ड इज प्लीजिंग टू ऑल लिविंग एंटिटीज एंड ऑल द इनहेबिटेंट्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड बोथ मूविंग एंड नॉन मूविंग आर प्लीजिंग टू हिम श्री प्रभुपाल ऑन दिस वर्स ए प्रैक्टिकल एग्जांपल ऑफ दिस वर्स शोन बाय लॉर्ड चेतन when he was traveling through the forest of jhari khand in central india for spreading his uh, sankirtan movement the tiger and elephant the deer and all the other wild animals joined him and were participating in their own way by dancing and chanting hari krishna so these are the two topics by now over with the two quotation in our book okay we have we have completed the first paragraph and second paragraph but still we can read these two paragraph if you want to to make uh, things clear at the present moment group of people are engaged in welfare activities in trump of society community and nation there's even an attempt in the form of united nation for the world for the world help activity but due to short coming of limited national activities such a general mass welfare program for the whole world is not practically possible the krishna conscious movement however is so nice that it can render highest benefit what shall power want to say is that even the uno is not able to give the all auspiciousness or people are not attracted or not benefiting everybody but a krishna conscious movement can do 
Therefore, Srila Rupa Goswami and other learned scholars agree that the broad propaganda of Krishna conscious movement is necessary. How the Krishna conscious movement can attract the attention of the whole world and how each and every man can feel pleasure in this Krishna conscious movement is stated in Padma Purana as follows. This is the verse we discussed. A person who is engaged in devotional service and full Krishna consciousness is to be understood as doing the best service to the whole world and to be pleasing everyone in the world. In addition to the human society, he is pleasing even the trees and animals because they also become attracted by such movement. A practical example of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sankirtan movement. So up till this is the two first topic discussed. Though topic one and two are discussed up till three. Now we are going to the topic number three. And topic number three is Sadha Guna Adi Pradatvam. It means devotional service give rise to the good qualities. And this is the verse which is quoted here. Good qualities versus Sukhdev fifth canto. 18th chapter 12 number verse Yasya si bhakti bhagavati akinchana sarvai gunahi tatra sama site sura arav abhakta syakuto mahat gunan manorathane asti dhavati dhavato bhai The devatas constantly dwell with all good qualities in that person who has pure bhakti for the Lord. There are no good qualities in non-devotees who chase after temporary material objects with desire for material pleasure. So this is the verse. The word Adi or other things has been added to indicate the devotee's ability to control Suras, it means demigods, and by extension all other beings. Sadhgunadi Pradatva means the bhakti puts uh, at the command of a devotee all good qualities and Lord and others as well. Sura referred to the Supreme Lord and others. That is first the Lord and then his attendants, the devatas or rishis. If the bhakti gave only the qualities of devata, that would not be remarkable. Even devata worship, worshipper can obtain those qualities which will be predominantly material, Sattva Guna, but uh, Sura means Lord and others. This is the commentary on this verse by uh, Jiva Goswami and uh, Vishwanath Chakrachana. Srila Prabhupada on this verse, what is in our book now? On the other hand, a person who is, in Krishna, who is not Krishna conscious has no good qualities. He may be highly educated from an academic point of view, but in actual field of his activities, he can be seen to be better than the animal. It should be lesser. Better than the animal. What is better or lesser in our book? Besser, Besser. Okay, Besser means basic qualities of a human being. Okay. On the other hand, person is not Krishna conscious, no good qualities and highly educated. A besser, actual field of... Besser means basic eating, eating, defending, meeting and that, that is besser. <coughs> Even though a person is highly educated academically, if he cannot go beyond the sphere of mental activities, then he is sure to perform only material activities and thus remain impure. There are so many persons in modern world who have been highly educated in materialistic universities, but it is seen that they cannot take up movement of Krishna consciousness and develop the high quality of demigods. For example, a Krishna conscious boy, even if he is not very well educated by university standard, can immediately give up all illicit sex life, gambling, mirroring and intoxication. Whereas those who are not in Krishna conscious, although very highly educated, are often drunkards, meat eaters, sex mongers, and gamblers. These are the practical proof of how Krishna consciousness person become highly developed in good qualities. Whereas the 
person who is not a Krishna conscious cannot do so. We experience that even a young boy's in Krishna consciousness is unattached to cinemas, nightclubs, naked dance shows, restaurants, liquor shops, etc. He becomes completely freed. He saves his valuable time from being extravagantly spent in the way of smoking, drinking, attending theater and dancing. So this is something which Srila Prabhupada has discussed about good qualities with a, his own commentary. Srila Rupa Goswami's commentary is only the words, but Srila Prabhupada has given an elaborate com commentary of a present Krishna conscious movement and its uh, uh, achievements and the devotees' good qualities. Okay, now before we are, we go to the next topic, next topic is happiness. So for Taha, this is the happiness we are here. We have completed this. Uh, uh, Sadhgunadi Pradhan produce good quality, yes, yes, bhakti. Only bhakti can produce good qualities. Material education cannot. Neither can a hut yoga or so called meditation. So, this is the next paragraph which is given as a B. Okay, can you see this now? Now, next one who is not in Krishna consciousness usually cannot sit silently even for half an hour. The yoga system teaches that if you become silent, you will realize that you are God. This system may be all right for materialistic person, but how long will they be able to keep themselves silent? Artificially, they may sit down for so-called meditation, but immediately after their low yogic performance, they will engage themselves again in such activities as illicit sex life, gambling, meat eating and many other nonsensical things. But a Krishna conscious person gradually elevates himself without endeavoring for the so-called silent meditation. Simply because he is engaged in Krishna consciousness, he automatically gives up all this nonsense and develop a high character. One develops the highest character by becoming a pure devotee of Krishna. The conclusion is that one, no one can truly have any good qualities if he is lacking Krishna consciousness. So now we are going to the fourth characteristic of uh, Shubhada. So here it is a given a separate heading in our book. So this is not actually a separate heading. This is the number four of the Shubhada. So you can write actually number four of the Shubhada. Number four of the auspiciousness. Happiness in Krishna Consciousness. And there are three types of happiness. Srila Rupa Goswami analyzed the different sources of happiness. Three types. Happiness from material enjoyment. Happiness by identifying oneself with the Brahma, which means Jnanis. Well, first happiness is of the Karmis. Second is of the Jnanis. And third is the happiness realized by serving the Lord, which means devotional. And then there are quotation are the proof for all for each one. So Sukha Pardatvam continued. Uh, this is the verse which is in our book, Tantra Shastra, Lord Shiva speaks. 
सिद्ध परमाश्चर्य भोक्ते मुक्ति चाश्वती नित्यम च परमानंदो भवेद गोविंद भक्तिता एस्टाउंडिंग मिस्टिक पावर्स मटियर इंजॉयमेंट एटर्नल हैप्पीनेस इन द रियलाइजेशन ऑफ द ब्रह्म एंड एटर्नल ब्लेस फ्रॉम सर्विस ऑफ द लॉर्ड ऑल अपीयर फ्रॉम भक्ति टू गोविंद so this is the verse which is from the tantra shastra happiness of mystic power happiness of material enjoyment happiness of impersonal brahm and happiness of devotion so this verse has a one more uh, yoga which is not in the first uh, slide out of these four the three happiness of mystic power happiness of material enjoyment happiness of impersonal brahm temporary therefore inferior happiness from devotional service is eternal therefore highest this is a simple thing now what actually in our book is shri prabhupada has elaborated on mystic powers so we will read now it is almost uh, two pages about this subject matter so we'll read now this sir uh, subject matter and then we'll come here back here on the slides so this is bhakti rasam in sindhu's verse says sukham vaishyaiskam brahmam aishwaryam chedi tata tridha the three type of happiness from material things from brahm realization and from the lord which means bhakti so first is happiness from material things second is happiness from brahm realization happiness from the supreme lord which means bhakti and this is the tantra shastra just we read now shila prabhupad on this words happiness derived from pure devotional service is highest because it is eternal It has been seen that the great Mayavadi, impersonal sannyasis, very highly educated and most realized souls, may sometimes take to political activities or social welfare activities. The reason is that they actually do not drive any ultimate transcendental happiness in their personal understanding, and therefore must come down to the material platform and take to such mundane affairs. but a person who is in fully in krishna consciousness will never return to the side any side of material platform however alluring and attractive attracting they may be he always knows what knows that no material welfare activities can compare to the spiritual activity of krishna consciousness so this is the another uh, quotation from hari bhakti sudodya This is in uh, uh, Bhakti Rasam in Sindhu. Then we will read Shila Prabhupada's purport, which is Shila Prabhupada's own elaboration on this, because so many people are doing yoga practices that time. So this is the another quotation uh, about Sukha Pradhatam from uh, Hari Bhakti Sudhodya. Bhuyo api yache devesa tvai bhakti hi dhrastu me ya mokshanta chatura varga. Phalada, sukada, lata. Ah, uh, this is actually very. This is actually uh, go in our uh, book. It is on the page number thirteen. The first paragraph on page number thirteen. Can you see? Hari Bhakti Sudhodaya. You found this? Yes, sir. So actually. The, the this whole purport two pages is Shri Prabhupada's own purport about the happiness derived from the mystic yoga, and he has elaborately discussed that part, which is in nectar of devotion. It is not in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So this Prabhupada's elaborate commentary on this section. So I so it it means uh, 
this uh, Shobhada will continue up till this paragraph. So this is included in Shobhada. And and then our next paragraph by now if you are on page number 13 actually where the word actually is there you yeah. write the characteristic quality number three which means uh, dried liberation moksha laguta kirti starting from actually according to bhakti samit sindhu is like that now so so now we have to read the rest of the purport Srila Prabhupada has a uh, uh, comment on this section also. Uh, Srila Prabhupada has actually included this verse in Moksha Laguta Kirta as well. Uh, so now we are going to read only our book first and then we'll see the slides okay okay uh, two pages simply it has been seen that great mayavadi we have read this portion okay mystic perfection you for we are reading from mystic perfection Achieved uh, by actually successful yogi only, not by so-called yogis, are eight. And what are what are these eight? Uh, and you are, you have this in our chart also. These are the eight. So Shri Prabhupada writes, Anima Siddhi, making body very small. Refer to the power by which one can become so small that he can enter into a stone. Modern scientific improvement also enable us to enter into the stone by making a tunnel. Because they provide for excavation so many subways penetrating the hills. It means so Anima Siddhi is a mystic perfection of trying to enter into the stone has also been achieved by the modern science, material science. These are the caves or the tunnels through which the trains go. Okay. Now next one. Similarly, all of the Yoga Siddhis or perfection are material arts. All the Yoga Siddhis are material arts. They are not spiritual. For example, in one yoga siddhi there is development of the power to become light, so light that one can float in the air or on water. That is also being performed by modern scientists. They are flying in the air and they are floating on the surface of the water and they are traveling under the water. After uh, comparing all these mystic yoga siddhis, to materialistic perfections, we find that the materialistic scientists try for the same perfection. So actually there is no difference between mystic perfection and materialistic perfection. Now Prabhupada is giving an example. A German scholar once said that the so-called yoga perfection had already been achieved by the modern scientists. And so he was not concerned with them. He intelligently went to India to learn how he could understand his eternal relationship with Supreme Lord by means of Bhakti Yoga, devotional service. Of course, in the category of mystic perfection there are certain processes which the material scientists have not yet been able to develop. For instance, mystic yogis can enter into the sun planet 
simply by using the rays of sunshine. This perfection is called Laghima. Similarly, yogi can touch the moon with his finger. Though the modern astronaut go to the moon with the help of a spaceship, they undergo many difficulties, whereas the person with a mystic perfection can extend his hand and touch the moon with his finger. This city is called Prapti. So Mahima is making body big, Laghima is making body light and invisible, Prapti is acquisition of sense, all sense enjoyment. In our slide there are the one line uh, definition of each Siddhi. With this Prapti Siddhi one can uh, one can only only can the perfect mystic touch the moon planet but uh, he can extend his hand anywhere and thank whatever he likes. He may be sitting thousands of miles away from this uh, certain point place and if he likes he can throw, take fruit from garden there Prapti Siddhi. Prabhupada used to say there was yogi uh, he has extended his hand to the Afghanistan and brought the nice pomegranate from there from a tree fresh so yogis can do that <laughs> there are Prabhupada used to give all these examples modern scientists have manufactured nuclear weapon with which they can destroy an insig uh, insignificant part of this planet but by this yoga siddhi is known as Ishita. Ishita means infuse one's power into another to create or destroy a planet at a will. Ishita means controller. Okay, yoga siddhi, Ishita. Destroy the entire planet simply by the will. Another perfection is called Vashita. By this perfection one can bring anyone under his control. This is kind of hypnotism, which is almost irresistible. Sometimes it is found that the yogis who may have attained a little perfection in the Vashita mystic power comes out among the people and speak all sorts of nonsense, control their minds, exploit them take their money and then go away. There are another mystic perfection which is known as Prakamya, magic. By this Prakamya Siddhi, one can achieve anything he likes. For example, one can make water enter into his eyes and then again come out from within the eyes. Simply by this, his will, he can perform such wonderful activities. So, Vashita, bring others under one's control, attachment while engaged in enjoyment, non-attachment. Kama, Kama Va Saita, highest perfection of mystic power to do impossible acts. Highest perfection of mystic power is called Kama Va Saita. This is also magic, but where is the Prakamya power acts to create wonderful efforts? effect within the scope of nature, Kamya Vasita permit one to contradict nature. In other words, to do the impossible. Of course, one can drive great amount of temporary happiness by achieving such mystic materialistic perfection. So why all these Siddhis are described here? Because people get happiness from this. Foolishly, people who are in a mode of the glamour of the modern materialistic advancement are thinking that Krishna conscious movement is for less intelligent person. Men, I am better off being busy with my material comfort, maintaining a nice apartment, family and sex life. These people do not know that at any moment they can be kicked out of their material situation. Due to ignorance, They do not know that the real life is eternal. Temporary comfort of the body are not the goal of life and it's due only to the darkest ignorance and the people become enamored of all glimmering of advancement of material comfort. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur has therefore said that advancement of material knowledge 
render this is good quotation what is the quote by bhakti vinod thakur advancement of material knowledge render a person more foolish because it causes one to forget his real identity by its glamour this is do this is doom for him because his human form of life is meant for getting out of material contamination by the advancement of material knowledge people are becoming more and more entangled in material existence they have no hope for being liberated from this catastrophe free so so we have just for your information which is not important and all these eight men see these and there are next 10 mystic perfections are also there only for information anori ma anori mamatvam to be free from hunger thirst sorrow infatuation infirmity and old age and death and these are yogis they can live for thousands of years dura dura sharvan to be able to hear from a very long distance dura darshan to be able to see from a long distance mano mano jaya mano jawa moving body as fast as mind kama rupa to be able to take any form according to one's wishes prakaya pravesha to be able to enter an another's body person's body to be able to die any time according to one's wishes swachand swachand mrityu deva krida darshan to be able to see sport of demigods sankalpa pradar prapti pradarth prapti to be able to attain things of one's own predetermination aprati apratihat adesh to possess such power that one's command cannot be disobeyed by anybody so these are the highest perfection of mystic powers but still that is temporary five lesser mystic perfections trikala gyatva to be able to know past present and future shitushnaadi dwanda sahasnudam capable of enduring opposite heat and cold prachita adi abhigyata to be able to know the mind of others agni surya jala visha prabhava sambana to be able to neutralize power of fire sun water and poison and aparajaya to be unconquerable by anybody so they appear really lofty things okay we can have all this uh this uh, actually covers uh, our second topic what is called shobhada some uh, some mystic uh, magician came and he did so many wonderful things and then shila pavda asked him pavpad asked him uh can you make uh, the birth and death death disappear he said swami ji only you can do that <laughs> so actually this is the only devotion that can give that permanent happiness but there are many uh, yogis they can do all this one yogi came from himalaya and uh, after 20 years and he said what you learn he said i can walk on the river and he has that mystic power he become lighter and he was walking on the water and a one wise saintly person is he said how much time you have spent is it 20 years he said in 20 years you has uh, you have earned only 2 rupees worth of oh, magic he said what is that he said i can cross the river in 2 rupees in a boat what is what is your achievement what's 2 rupees <coughs> so people have all these different uh, mystic power which are very uh, alluring alluring and uh, glamour is very much and people want that but they are all temporary and prabhupada says they are all mechanical and scientists have already achieved that now if we have to start for the next topic 
tomorrow we will finish this uh, chapter and enter into the next chapter. Uh, so, this uh, Hari Bhakti Sudhodhyak, which is right now, is in, is, can be counted in both. Both means it is better this uh, Moksha Lagukarta should start from in Hari Bhakti Sudhodhya because uh, these are the three quotations uh, about the third quality Moksha Laguta Krita. Pure devotion service makes liberation insignificant. So now the Hari Sudhodhya is there, the four attainment of religiosity, economical development, sense gratification and liberation cannot compare even to drop of happiness in Krishna consciousness. Therefore devotee, devotee reject them. Then Srila Prabhupada gave example of Sridhar Kolavach. Then Narada Pancharatra, all the joys of religiosity, economical development, sense gratification and liberation follow the devotional service of Lord as maid servant follow the queen. So these are the only three quotations in our book about the third item. So shall we continue further? Or it is enough for today? Enough. Enough. <laughs> okay. So oh, wonderful. So Srila Prabhupada. Huh? Oh, this, this portion uh, uh, Bhakti Hari Bhakti Sudodaya uh, some teacher has included in a Shubda and some has included in both Shubda as well as Moksha Gukarta. It is better it should be in, used in both. Actually a pure devotee, this is what is written here. Actually, a pure devotee does not aspire after any of these perfections because of happiness derived from the devotional service and Krishna consciousness. It's so transcendental and so unlimited that no other happiness can compare to it. Therefore, this is in a Shubhada, a fourth item of Shubhada. It is said that even one drop of happiness in Krishna consciousness stands beyond comparison with an ocean of his happiness derived from any other activity. Thus, any person who has developed even a little quality of pure devotional service can very easily kick out all other kinds of happiness derived from religiosity, religiousness, economic and development, sense graduation and, and liberation. Example, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu offered everything to Kolavat Sridhar, but he rejected everything. So this is the one, uh, according to Bhakti Rasam and Sindhu, this up till here is Shubhda. But this portion is also included into Moksha Lagu Kirta because this also reject the Moksha. So in Moksha Lagu Kirta, this is definition in Bhakti. Tomorrow we will discuss this. I think it's too much for today. Already. Now we can discuss what are the questions. In this section, Prabhu, can I ask a question, Prabhu? Yeah, question. Uh, other things we can discuss now. More. Uh, uh, let me. You are saying. Let you, me, yes, let, sir. You mentioned what Suboda. Huh? Suboda or Sudo Sudo Dai Sudo Dai. Yeah. Shubh Shubh Da. Shubh Da. Okay. Uh, Shubh right. Dattava. Shubh Dattava. Shubh means uh, Aspiya Dattava means one who, which gives. One which oh. gives auspiciousness. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, we have read this uh, up till here. In the Hari Bhakti Shudodhya, it is stated that Prahlad Maharaj, a great devotee of Lord, prayed to Narsingha Dev. My dear Lord, I repeatedly pray unto your lotus feet that I may simply be stronger in devotional service. I simply pray that my Krishna consciousness may be more and more steady. Because happiness derived out of Krishna consciousness and devotional service is so powerful that with it one can have all the other perfection of religiosity, economic development, 
sense greater than even the attainment of liberation from material existence. So actually pure devotee, this is what we have read about. And then the great devotee uh, Sridhar Kolavaj. And then the quotation of Nar. So tomorrow we'll read this section actually is Moks Laguta Karta. But something is also included in Subhada. Okay, and now you have any question or comment or our, our uh, uh, questions from the question bank? So Klesha Ghani, everybody is very clear about Klesha Ghani? Yes, any question or comment? No question. What, uh, uh, any question, bank question from this uh, section? So chapter 1 questions are many. Explain the cycle of sin and define each of its stages. Cycle of sin. What example does Srila Prabhupada give to explain Prarabdha and Aparadha? We have done this yesterday. So how bhakti destroy it up the cycle of the sin? Which is the most important part bhakti describe about the cycle of sin? What is your answer? Yes, avidya and sinful desires. How karm does not fully destroy the cycle of sin? What references from Srimad Bhagavatam is quoted in Nectar of Devotion? Uh, furnish the analogy given in this regard. How does Gyan not fully destroy the cycle of the sin? What analogy is given in regard in this nectar of devotion? This karma and Gyan, where are they? Yes. Any anybody has anything an answer to this? These two questions appear to be same thing. Gyan and uh, Karma are in Ajamil's uh, example. The charity and ritualistic things are all Karma. And even Tapasya and other things are in a Gyan. So example is actually Ajamil. And uh, the root cause of the sinful desire was not destroyed. So Bhagavatam, this verse quoted there. Uh, Aghani Puyanti Tapo Adi Bhi 
So they are given separately, but actually the same example and same verses there as far as I understand. You can study if you can find something else. What is next? What are some manifestations of Prarabdha Karma? Yesterday we discussed four things. He has, some, he has some special birth, he has some education, he has something which is the Prarabdha Karma manifested. Uh, knowing that bhakti destroy all sins, how does a devotee behave? How does the devotee behave? Knowing that bhakti, he should not, he should guard against doing sinful activities. He must be humble. There is a one line only in some purport. You read the purport, you will get only one line. However, devotee never in, uh, indulge in sinful activities. Though uh, all the sinful activities are described, sinful reactions are described, but still devotee is very careful. And then is the next, that is the list the list and explain the four qualities of the second character step. The, this is what we have discussed today. Shubhada, attractive to all, uh, all good qualities, all type of happiness, the best type of happiness. This is a Shubhada. Well, this uh, and the 23rd is afterwards, that will come tomorrow. Okay, uh, these are simply technical confusing questions, but the answer is same. Uh, you can read and see. Okay, any other question or comment? Well, there, there must be uh, uh, something about the how bhakti destroyed ignorance. This question doesn't appear there. But if you take to the second as a jnana, uh, if it is taken, I, I don't understand what is this question, how is it is like that. But this is the the first karma we can take to the ajamel and second we can take to the uh, bhakti destroy the avidya because these two things are not destroyed by all other any other method no other method karma jnana or yoga can destroy, uh, destroy the seed of uh, sinful desire and ignorance or avidya they can destroy the reaction to the sin and sinful activities but they cannot destroy and what are the example given of the karma this Srila Prabhupada's two example of the Kunjar Snan, elephant bath and uh, and the venereal disease that is also there so these are the two part of the sinful cycle the cycle of the sins has two parts which are very important. The seed of a material desire and avidya or ignorance. Only bhakti can destroy them. No other process can destroy them.
हरिकृष्ण प्रभु जी एंड वॉट इज द साइकिल ऑफ लाइक दैट इज अविद्या बीज पापम अप्रारब्ध दिस इज द साइकिल दिस इज एक्चुअली सीक्वेंस सीक्वेंस ऑफ ओ क्लेश रूट काज इज अविद्या एंड देन दिस साइकिल इज दैट फ्रॉम द सिनफुल डिजायर फ्रॉम द सिनफुल डिजायर ऑफ से से साइकिल विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द बिलो avidya no no cycle will start from below also how it goes back not to the avidya the cycle enter back to sinful seed of sinful desire yes please how it will go there because the clash is of two types reaction is of two type prarabdha and aprarabdha prarabdha some will suffer and finished but the aprarabdha will continue and it will give rise to kut and coot because there is a sinful desire is still there so it will enter into the sinful desire seed of sinful desire then do sinful activity again come down and again become prarabdha so this will con- aprar this continue this so is the cycle we have to write this uh, in our uh, in our slide which are given to you in the last part of this uh, tomorrow by the end you will get these two ch- chart of the which today i have shown you the cycles so in the cycle the two most important uh, are uh, avidya and uh, in a cycle actually the most important is seed of uh, sinful desire all avidya is ultimate cause of all suffering complicated things <laughs> anyway i think wording of the question are complicated the things are not complicated the word uh, uh, karm and gyan this should be in a ajamel and the word should be bhakti how bhakti destroy the most important cause of the clash that is avidya and what are the example given there of the uh, snake the female snake demons in a forest fire so that it should be more clear but it's it's, it's not uh, apparent uh, i stayed forward you must know that bhakti destroy aprarabh karma prarabdha karma then bhakti destroy the seed of the sinful desire and avidya these are the four stages krishna <coughs> prabhu ji in this previous question what are the some manifestations of prarabdha karma this includes those uh, disease uh, chronic disease and yeah these these are sinful the the per sinful activities are in four these are the four topics given there a birth in certain family certain education certain other things disease are that all these are because of sinful activities these are specifically for those who has a bad prarabdha but prarabdha can have a good side also and bad side also so only bad side is given in our book because the topic is clash not the pious if you want you can write that prarabdha means uh, uh, mature reaction to the action the action may be pious the action may be impious if the action is impious then sinful person will have all these four characteristics that a born in a sinful family of a hunter or a butcher he has a ugly body he has no education he is always implicated in the court cases but a person has a pious prarabdha is mature is a pious then he can be born as a in a aristocratic family highly educated person a very beautiful disposition and his uh, all these things can is also a prarabdha 
So both are prarabdha. But since our topic is only the sinful side, so we are discussing that. Any other question? Uh, I think this this is little 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 twisted better, but from tomorrow onward things will be more smooth and easy. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Yes. Yes, sir, Rasika Shekhar. Prabhuji, um, um, in your, Prabhuji, uh, you showed that circle, you know, the circle, the desire and all these things come again and again. One circle you show the slide. Yeah, it is there in your slides, the, those which are given to you, you yeah. This desire and come as a circle and goes on and on. Yeah, you yeah, that. yeah. Ultimately, avidya is yeah. on the top because of avidya, the yes. desire, and from desire it goes again and again. Yes, I want to know uh, two, two things. One thing is uh, people sometimes say that in kali yuga, your thinking and like uh, you you do some bad things and you think about something bad in your mind, it is not sinful. Yes, yes, yes. That's so, right. So, does that apply in that circle? Oh, it has nothing to do with the circle in one, uh, not in a mind. When you act, then it will work. Oh. When you, so, the thought can become a desire, right? Yeah, the desire is there, but then you act. Usually coming from desire. Uh, yeah, then, oh, then you will act. This is, uh, then, then when we, once we, we act, then we are implicated. Uh, in our in, in the slides which are sent to you, the slides which you have, in the last portion all this thing is there. This is in a chart, one extra chart in our uh, in the slides which are given to you. Papam sinful action gave rise to aprarab then prarab. Then aprarabdha directly give rise to prarabdha sum and sum aprarabdha give rise to kuta. Now what happened? Sinful desire aprarabdha one will go to prarabdha and then he will take some birth and then he enjoy suffer finish. But the sum aprarabdha will in a go in a kut and kut will become a bid sinful desire and this sinful desire will go in a sinful action and then again prarabdha aprarabdha then it will continue. Then. So this is in our book there and this is also in our book. Ultimately it is big ignorance which give rise to sinful desire. That give rise to pop, sinful action, that give rise to aprarab. From aprarab some will become prarab, then we suffer. But some will go as a coot. And this coot will sinful disposition that goes into the sinful desire. That give rise to sinful action, then the circle will continue. So the most important is, is sinful desire. The sinful desire is most important in this section. I don't know how to, oh yeah, this is, this is sinful desire. This sinful desire is most uh, difficult and it cannot be really uh, destroyed by karma and gyan. Only bhakti can purify this, uh, this sinful desire in the heart. And then the cycle can be broken. Because this is here our willpower, can, uh, 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 we have free will, we can act here. Once, uh, once this, when, when, once some comes to this stage, after performing sinful act, once this act is performed, then this uh, portion is inevitable. You cannot change this. But you can change this. So the circle can be broken here, generally. And the best way is to finish this avidya, then there is no any, any circle.
so this is these are the two slides in uh, given to you in your book or in your book means in ppt thank you thank you prabhuji one again your sound is breaking and your sound is breaking prabhu it is Uh, somebody, I don't hear you. Prabhuji, I also have one doubt, Prabhuji. Uh, like for some karmas, we instantly get reactions or prarabdha. Sometimes, uh, you know, the, the, the devotees are... Because... Prabhuji, your sound is not clear. Hare Krishna. But they, they say... that you can sit in but you are you krishna can you no you, i cannot hear you some other uh, if if you can uh, yeah uh, speak uh, speak i can hear tell uh, tell not clear krishna Yes. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Yes. Hare Krishna. Go, go ahead. Yes, say, say, say. Hare Krishna. Okay, Prabhu. I will, I will put it in the chat box. Okay. Yeah, you... Prabhuji, uh, like, uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, sometimes Prabhuji, we get the uh, immediate, uh, like we say, instant karma. Like we get the response immediately, we get the prarabdha immediately. Uh, but for some karmas, we may have to wait uh, for many lifetimes also to get <laughs> back. Uh, yeah, yeah. It is like that. If I eat too much today, then I will have a vomiting today. So this is a reaction to the karma right now. But if I eat uh, something. Uh, uh in a small quantity that will accumulate in my body and i will get disease maybe after 50 year so similarly some karma can give the uh, reaction very quickly some will give very late so those which give late are called aprarabdha which give quickly are called prarabdha so in this same way uh, prabhupada gave the example of disease when we cut we don't know but the effect will be after some time so some karma really we get result right now you know yeah if, if you hit somebody he will hit you back if you say by something bad to the other person he will try, say you again same so some karma give result immediately but actually all our actions have some reaction some reactions are quick and some are slow those who are slow they continue from many lifetimes because sometimes we do something for that uh, sinful activities we have to are some good uh, good action we have to take uh, some other things for that to manifest there's an example given of uh, i think uh, this dhritarashtra so he killed the 100 uh, uh, children of some say ant or somebody so he has to suffer the 100 son, sons uh, death but he must have some pious activities pious activities to get 100 son so it take uh, it take so many years he has done so many pious activities and he got 100 sons and then they are killed so there is it is too complicated actually it's too complicated it's uh, is a very vicious and continuous therefore karma no gati hi gehna this is bhagavad gita the karma gati the the path of karma and the movement of karma is very very deep and difficult to understand when they fructify now afterwards when they give reaction is very complicated it is what actually vikrama which we are discussing not even karma karma gives spice result vikrama gives klesh but devotees only perform a karma
Uh, read this section carefully. I think most of the things will be clear. I think we have read almost every word, but still there are in between the lines certain things which you have to experience. Or Raj Shekhar has written something in chat. People sometimes say that sin is the way better than a prarabdha. Could you please elaborate on this difference between the sin and aprarabd? Sin is a action and aprarabd is a reaction to that action. No, Prabhupada. It, was, it is aparada. It is not aparabda. Oh, oh, oh. I was asking aparada. Oh, aparada. Yeah, aparada. Aparad. Yeah, aparada and sins are different. Sins are according to the karma and aparats are not because of karma but because of our negligence. So aparad if done repeatedly then it can become karma. Knowingly if we do the aparad repeatedly then it will become karma. But generally aparad is not a karma. Aparad is our negligence. And in our language, we use the aparad generally, nam aparad after initiation. What negligence we do, there is nam aparad. But still, there are aparad which are to the, that we will discuss. Not discuss, only we will know, we will note by the sixth chapter that if there are different dham aparad, puja aparad, offenses during deity worship, so there are a list of offenses. But they are not sinful. They are, they are the don't in the devotional service. We should not do that. They are do, do's and don'ts of the devotional service. They are not karma. They are not sinful. They are nevarti, pravarti and nevarti. Never, they are nevarti. Don't do. Do's and don'ts. Aparas are don'ts. Don't do don't. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Okay, tomorrow we will finish this chapter and maybe we start the second wave. And second wave is Sadhan Bhakti. And this will go many days. Up till chapter 16. Up till 16, this sadhan bhakti will continue. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. See you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare